Um, so what, what do you get out of being exposed to these young folk? We'll come back to America in a second. But when you move around the world and we see you, you know, talking to kids in Cuba, talking to kids, playing with them in Venezuela, what, what's that, what's, what do you get out of that? Well, at first it helps you understand the cycle of life because uh -huh. you give them information, but they're also giving you information. And as you get older, for example, in our band, we have members of our orchestra like Carlos Enriquez and Ali Jackson, Walter Blanding. I taught them when they were in high school, mm -hmm. and now they teach me. Like, I regularly call Ali and say, man, can you break this rhythm down for me? Uh, Carlos was actually our music director in Cuba, and uh, he's been instrumental in a lot of my education. And I, I started to develop a saying with them, because they tease me all the time. You get older, you have that familiar relationship. Mm -hmm. I say, you have to follow your young leadership, too. Yeah. So... Uh, I get so much from having an opportunity to interface with the, with the younger people and to bring information to them and to represent our culture and our way of life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, the, the, the feeling and the warmth and the love is, is unbelievable. Uh, the type of exchange that goes on between students and teachers or visiting people who are doing master classes and uh, not just when they're musicians, mm -hmm. even general classes when the students are not necessarily uh, musicians. This, this, I'm not sure this is accurate, but it was, it was certainly my read when I saw the 60 Minutes piece, and I'm curious as to your take on this. I get the sense, as I've seen footage of you and around the world engaging these young people, that there's a certain, again, my words, not yours, a certain energy, a certain enthusiasm, a certain anxiousness, a certain thirst that these kids around the world have for the music, jazz, that we gave to the world that might not necessarily exist that thirst in this country. Am I right or totally off base here? I think that um, you, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think that's really accurate. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Like if I could tell you how many times, especially when I get into like poor areas mm -hmm. or if I deal with our kids, Afro-American kids, if I could tell you how many times I've taught kids and they just start crying, mm -hmm. not musicians necessarily, because they want to feel that love and that feeling. I have a lot of experience teaching. My, my father was a teacher. Mm -hmm. My mama was a community worker. I uh, taught in so many schools. If, uh, so when you get that experience of how to communicate with younger people, put that hand on them and give them that old school feeling, uh, uh, the, the maturity in the adult, a lot of our kids just need the, the feeling of that love. And that's the frame of reference that I teach from, and that's the frame of reference that all of our musicians in the Jazz and Lincoln Center Orchestra, we all teach from that same fr frame of, of reference. We're like neighborhood people who've had the opportunity through this music to gain a platform and, and spread the message of this music, which is basically love and a, a form of communication that's honest and truthful. And our, our kids want it too. You know, they're distracted a lot of times because we're, they're marketed to a lot and they're seen as a commodity. But when you get underneath that, man, our kids, can, can, our kids are beautiful.